This year, the March equinox was either on the 19th or 20th, depending on your location. And his dictionary definition says the equinox is either of two occasions in the year when the center of the sun is directly above the equator and day and night are approximately equal in length. Also, this is when the sun rises due east and sets due west within a few days before or after the equinox, again, depending on your location. So here is the globe and flat earth model of the earth. And here's the observed path of the sun over the equator for each model. Now we in the globe community know why the flat earth is a failure at explaining this observation. And what I'm going to do is show you an actual observed sunset near the equator and why this observation works for the globe. Now Singapore is about 1.3 degrees latitude north of the equator. And this is its location on both maps, which is on the southern tip of the Malay Peninsula. Now this is a short time lapse of the setting sun as seen from Singapore, and I'll leave a link in the description. And this was uploaded about a month before the September equinox back in 2013, so let's take a look. Now you can see that the sun is setting almost perfectly perpendicular to the horizon. So again, this is the observed path of the setting sun in Singapore. And as you can see, it's not perfectly vertical because Singapore is about 1.3 degrees north of the equator. But if you did go to the equator, the path of the setting sun would be vertical. Now I currently live in Bangkok, which is about 13.8 degrees north of the equator. And Singapore is about 950 miles to the south of me. Now these are some screenshots I took from a few 50 minute time lapse videos that I made with my P900. Now the path of the setting sun that I see is also not vertical, but more of an angle than seen in Singapore because I'm farther to the north. Now my time lapse videos also show that the sun does not set due to perspective is put forth by those in the globe denying community. And these time lapses are repeatable by any flat earther who owns a P900 or P1000. So let's compare the path of the observed sun for Singapore that we saw in this video with data from timeanddate.com. The boxes that are highlighted in yellow show that the sun is rising due east and setting due west. And the altitude of the noon solar sun is at 89 degrees. Now also note that the length of the day is 12 hours and 6 minutes, and this does not change very much in Singapore. You can see here that the longest day in the June solstice is about 12 hours and 12 minutes, and the shortest day on the December solstice, about 12 hours and 3 minutes. And that's only a difference of about 9 minutes between the longest and shortest day. Now again, I live to the north in Bangkok, and the difference between our longest and shortest day is only about an hour and 40 minutes. Now this is data from suncalc.org, and what is nice about them is that they include graphics that show the path of the sun. Here's the location of Singapore at the tip of the Malay Peninsula. Now they have a more precise solar noon altitude of 88.74 degrees. And this is the observed path of the sun that rises due east. The solar noon is a little bit to the south of Singapore and the sun sets due west. So let's see if these observations work on the flat earth. Here's the location of Singapore just to the north of the equator. And this is the solar noon sun. And this would be the location of the approximate 12 hour night and day. Now when the local noon sun is in this location, this would be sunrise for Singapore. So on a flat earth, if you were living in Singapore, you should see the sun rising to the northeast. Of course, what you actually see is the sun rising to the east. So the flat earth model predicts a sunrise that is not even close to east. Of course, the same is true for sunset. The projected compass direction is not even close to what we actually observe. But the globe can easily explain these observations. Now here's Singapore, just to the north of the equator. And the path of the equinox sun is above the equator from east to west. So yes, not only does this work for Singapore, 
Everyone along the same longitude as Singapore also sees the sun rising to the east, and this is because the sun is so far away that the light rays reach the earth in parallel. The same is also true for sunset. Of course, on a flat earth, it's not hard to see that everybody along that longitude would be seeing the sun rise at a completely different compass bearing. And this is also true for sunset. Now here's another question for flat earthers. Do they think this sun just suddenly stops moving downward at the horizon? Have they ever thought about this question? What path does the sun take at night to return to the east? Do they really think it would take a 90 degree right turn to go around the North Pole? How can anyone not understand that that sun continues on that same vertical path below you at night as it returns to the east to rise in the morning? Again, if you're in Singapore, this is where you see sunrise and sunset. This is zenith. The altitude of the observed solar noon sun is at about 88.7 degrees. So again, what path does this sun take to return to the east to rise again in the morning? Well, on a flat earth, the North Pole is over 6,000 miles away in this direction to the north. Which means that a flatter sun would have to take a hard right turn to go around the North Pole. Now since this is the observed path of the sun that you see during the day from Singapore, it makes logical sense that the sun is just going to continue on that same path below you at night. So how does this work on the globe? Let's start with the equinox sun directly over the equator. This is the location of the sun's ground position on the equator and of course the division between day and night. And here is Singapore at noon. Now as the earth rotates in this direction, Singapore will be moving away from the sun's ground position on the equator. So the earth has rotated 15 degrees and this is Singapore's position at 1 p.m. Here we are at 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and this would be Singapore at sunset. Now when you look at this, the rotating globe model is really a very simple explanation of why we see the observed equinox sun directly over the equator. And again, the problem with the flat earth model is that everybody on the same longitude sees sunrise and sunset at completely different compass bearings. But in reality, everybody sees the actual sunrise almost due east and the sunset almost due west. Of course, this is why people in the flat earth community would rather not talk about the sun on the equinox.